For those that might have been following along, this is the progress I've got with the truck radio controller circuit uh, build. I finally cracked a decent range. In this video, I'm going to talk about what it took to get from the range of 60 centimeters to the range that you're seeing here. Doing a quick recap on what we had before from the prior videos, we had uh, this diagram was what we were working from and we had over here the crystal oscillator which was built in a previous video and that's this here. And we also had our square waves that we were getting from our Arduino being passed through to the mixing circuit. So that was coming out of the Arduino here and then going into this mixing circuitry which we covered in another video. What we then had was we just had the antenna and that was coming straight out of the mixing circuitry so it was like wired round to there and we didn't have any of this amplification part. With that I was able to get about a 60 centimetre range that the truck would reliably respond. So I knew that we needed to build some amplification and maybe there could be something done in the antenna space as well. This is the amplifier circuit that I have that's working now. It is a common emitter amplifier uh, design and I had to spend a lot of time experimenting with values for all of the different components to get a good result. It started its life on a breadboard but I found that that was too awkward to work with and because I wanted to adjust so many things it's very fiddly and also there's capacitance on the breadboard. I ended up building these two units here. Now this one here might look complicated but it's not really. All it is is a set of switches lined up with different capacitors so that I could pick a capacitor to use for this uh, emitter capacitor here. Changing the switch would pick a different one. The other board here is pretty much everything else. So we've got our, our little S9018 transistor and then each of these resistors here, I have two trim pots in series that I can use so I can vary the values. So these ones and these ones for varying the biasing of the, the transistor, this for the uh, collector um, resistance value, and this here for the emitter resistance value. If anyone's wondering what uh, these two little resistors are here, well they were in series with these two and these two uh, variable resistors here so that made up this part here or this part here and their purpose was just so that when I adjusted the variable resistors to zero I wouldn't end up shorting from power to ground. The antenna then plugs in here on the collector side. I don't actually use this capacitor, it's just I can use it if I wanted to but it's not actually being used, it goes straight to the antenna. And in terms of the input it comes in through here. So this yellow wire is effectively this part and it comes through this 79 nanofarad capacitor in. And that's the whole amplifier circuit. Once I then got everything nicely then I uh, took this little unit and unplugged and plugged various bits to so I could do measurements of all the individual parts and that's how, how come we have odd values like HFE 119 and 907 ohms etc. That's just the measured values for this particular circuit. So let me walk you through what I did to get this, the component values I needed right for the amplifier. I wanted to test everything with the circuit it was going to be connected to, so the first thing I did was just check that the crystal oscillator is working and producing a signal. And we can see that's the case. The next thing I wanted to do was to check the output of the mixing circuit. can see from the mixing circuit that we're getting our signals when we push the buttons. Having this bouncy signal is not really helpful for testing the amplifier. What I'd really like is something that's just continuous. So what I did was disconnected the Arduino and if I was to take that input signal and put it on VCC then I'll suppress so I don't want that. Instead what I'm going to do is just have it hooked up to ground so that the mixer just continuously lets through that signal.
Now I can take this output point and plug that into the amplifier and start adjusting things. Here's the whole thing with the amplifier connected. I have the feed from the oscillator going into the input of the amplifier. Just after the input capacitor on the amplifier I have the yellow lead of the scope coming in and that's the smaller signal you're seeing here in the yellow. Then on the back end of the amplifier on the output side I have the blue trace. So to visualize it, yellow trace here, blue trace here. Let's take a look at the impact of the capacitor from the emitter of the transistor. If I disconnect that, we can see that our gain drops a lot. When I put it back, it comes up. Let's also have a look at the relationship between the value of the emitter resistor here and this capacitor. So if I disconnect the capacitor and I start to lower the resistance at the emitter of the transistor, I can get more gain. And at this point here, I have zero emitter resistance. If I bring it back down and plug the capacitor back in, we get our gain back. And now if I start lowering my emitter resistance down, I don't or raising it up, it doesn't drop off as much when I adjust the emitter resistance. If I make the emitter resistance too high, eventually I end up with less gain or lower output than I'm actually putting in. Let's take a look at the impact of this collector resistor. As I lower its value, this happens. This is at sort of zero. As I raise it up, we get some gain, and then it starts to drop off again. And if I make this collector uh, value too big, or really big, I just really get sort of a pass-through sort of signal. Now take a look at the, the biasing resistor here, this one at the bottom. If I sweep nearly the entire range, not much happens. If I take it all the way to zero, then things stop. But in general, there's kind of a lot of room to move with this value here. If we take a look at this uh, biasing resistor on the top half, If I take it down too low, we lose gain. And there's a point if I take it too high, it starts to drop off as well. If I was going to do that process of working out the component values from the beginning, so let's just reset all of these to some sort of middle value. The first thing I'd probably do would be just to throw in some sort of capacitor on the, um, the emitter side here. Um, and I'd probably go with the 42 Pika for it because of previous experience with this 27 megahertz scenario. So I'll do that. The next thing I would do would be to sweep the emitter and collector values.
and in the end with the sort of low values that I like in the previous time when I measured it these sort of low values of say 140 ohms for the emitter resistor and sort of 900 ohms for the collector that's where everything seems to start working quite well for a 27 megahertz signal with this kind of amplifier the reason I'm using sort of 8 AA batteries which should be about 12 volts is to have enough sort of headroom with the transistor so that we don't have any um, clipping I guess on the, app, the amplified signal we just take a quick look at the signals going in and out we can see 27 megahertz and about 1.9 volts peak to peak in this scenario right now and if I was to measure the output I've got nearly 6 volts peak to peak here also 27 megahertz so the gains kind of maybe about 3 times after building that I gave it a test and I got about this much range maybe 2 meters so after all of that work in this space of the amplifier we had gained up to 2 meters which was a little bit disappointing so I started to look at this aspect and this here is actually what I'm using as an antenna and believe it or not that will actually get us more than 2 meters the issue was I had another antenna going on that I wasn't thinking about. I had a quite a long wire running from the crystal oscillator into the mixing circuit and a few other long wires as well. And what I did was I made sure that the only ones that I left long were these control lines from the buttons that go into the Arduino, which don't really have anything to do with the RF side of things, and also this, the input signal from the Arduino. That wire is quite long still. But everything else, I made sure it was only about this long and that made all the difference. I think what was happening is I was getting a transmission of this, the continuous 27 megahertz signal from the crystal oscillator and that was interfering with the signal coming out here and by shortener, shortening this connection into the mixer that was not transmitting as much and then we had a much better output and that made all the difference. And now we can see same circuit shorter wires, much more range. So that's how I got from 60 centimeters to the range you're seeing now. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks very much for watching.